Hello, and welcome back to another episode on The Practice Odyssey. My name is Alex. My name's Jen. And if you're new here, The Practice Odyssey is your place to come when you'd like to drink a coffee and discuss flute methods. Uh, what we do is we take a well-known or lesser-known flute method or way to improve our flute playing, do it solely for two weeks, to, and then report back to you listeners if it did or did not improve our flute playing. But this season, season six of our podcast, an amazing number, uh, we are doing the season of why, um, which is for any flute aficionados out there, the season of why is about, yes, you guessed it, world-renowned flutist Trevor Why, And we are, for this season, playing solely from his flute books that you can find in his recently published Omnibus. Well, recently being in the classical sense, like probably it was released in the past decade or so. So very much in the classical sense. Last week, we did book one of his series, which was all about tone. Mm -hmm. And today we are going to do so book two, which is technique. technique. So... Are our fingers going to be super technique savvy after this? Are we going to be playing through every single Doppler piece with fluidity? Yeah, and that's what we did for the past two weeks. We played through technique. And now uh, grab your coffees and let's, let's discuss this book. What are its pros? What are its cons? Did it change our lives? So, mm. um, yeah. So, Jen, normally at this part of the show, we usually do a bio of our yes. esteemed author or composer or flutist that's put together this book. Uh, however, <laughs> since we have like the same author for the entire series, um, maybe do you have like a cool fact about Trevor Y for us or something yeah. that might change it up? Yeah, instead of you listening to yet another biography of Trevor Wye, mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in more yes. information about Trevor Wye and you're just jumping into the season now, you can go back to uh, last episode and then there's a full biography on Trevor mm -hmm. Wye and who he is and what he does there. But for this week, for those who have already heard it, um, I'm currently watching, as, uh, as we record, a very intriguing <laughs> YouTube clip by Trevor Wye where he's playing Ooh. his special eye flute, uh, which is an acrylic flute an with LEDs. Flute. Yes. Um, and <gasps> the LEDs are linked to proximity switches fixed to 13 keys. Um, and so every time you play a different note or switch keys, uh, the flute changes colour. Uh, <gasps> so I'm watching oh, a cool. flute playing light show at the moment. Um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> and it, and apparently he even tells you how to make one in his book, Fantastic Flutes. Alex, clearly this is our next project. Um, I too uh, wish for an yes. eye flute <laughs> full of LEDs, which lights up whenever I play. Of yes. which... Also, you know, for teaching and each time a student's like, oh no, I did have my right hand pinky down when I played the E, you can just record just the like... video and be like, eh. I'm sorry. Did you see the purple up. LED go off? I did not. So <laughs> exactly. I think that is. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of all of the valuable pedagogical applications that this flute could have. So that's our fun fact about Trevor Y. It's on YouTube. I'll also put it in the show notes. So um, Alex, can you Ooh. give us a bit of a summary about what this book has in it, the structure of it? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so book two technique is all about... Well, you heard it. Maybe it's about technique. So it's broken up a little similar to how book one tone was broken up, where there's a lot of exercises and he sets it up so progressively they get more difficult so you can work through them with a teacher or by yourself on your own time. So the first section, Technique General, contains five different sections. You have daily exercises one and two. You also have scale exercises. And then the last two bits are Machiavellian exercises, one and two, which were a lot of fun. Oh, sorry. Maybe they were not fun. We're going to find out. <laughs> and then after that, he has a few extra sections about technique with regards to relaxing, trills, 
and sequences. And then to finish it up, just like any classic Y book does, we have some examples of orchestral excerpts in which we can apply all of our newfound technique prowess. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that sums it up. It's like a 30, 35 page book. Not too, not too hefty. Um, but yeah, so that's what Jen and I did for the past two weeks. Jen, mm. how did your first week go? Did, oh. What did you think? Was your technique just flawless now after the first week? Uh, after the first week. I mean, certainly, yes. <laughs> so my challenge to myself was the first week um, we tackled a new book. I would just use that book. I was limited to that book. I was not allowed to explore any of the helpful references he makes within that book regarding other books of his omnibus. So my first mm-hmm. week was just purely technique. Um, look, I had a quick look at it and, yeah, how it was broken up and realised that there was a lot <laughs> of material. There is. So um, I basically tried to split my technique practice up into two sections. So I would do a daily exercise every day and then I would pick one of the extra technical aspects down the end of the book like the trill exercises or the sequences so that's how I structured everything I like uh keeping things fresh so I have to I have to admit um it has been a while since I have used this book I used it a lot during college or university um but since then Mm -hmm. I haven't really I've been using other technical methods just you know to keep things interesting and new so it's been a while I went back to this and I had forgotten the little gems in here. Um, Namely, (laughs) uh, the first part of his book starts off with uh, low register notes, Mm -hmm. all these exercises. So I want you to think about the fingers of your hand and arguably one of the weakest or the weakest finger on your hand is your little finger. Is with the pinky finger, mm. we have to play five notes with this one pinky finger, which is moving like a little acrobatic gymnast uh, in crazy circles <laughs> um, all around about mm-hmm. four keys on the bottom of the flute. So he's got these exercises which are specifically designed to work, to basically give your pinky like this amazing workout. Um And I'd forgotten how Mm -hmm. focused it was and how good it is. So basically I started every single day for the two weeks, but I'll stick to first week, to this first week, just starting with two or three of these low fingered exercises where basically you're just aiming to keep it relaxed and my hand, well, I'm not going to go still, but less movement was my goal. Yeah. And I noticed after a week of working on these exercises every day, a little bit every day, because he says just practice it, practice two or three and just until you feel fatigue in your hand, which happens quite quickly, actually. I was surprised at how fast um, that fatigue sits in when you've just been playing low C's and C sharps and D's for ages. Um, I found all of the passages in my repertoire, which I'm playing at the moment, When they had C's or C sharps already, I could feel the difference about how much more fluid and strong that finger felt and how much easier it was. So, um, look, as you know, to those who have been listening to the podcast for years with us, um, I am my favourite thing is finding bang for my buck in terms of technical exercises and things. (laughs) And this, I would have to say, is definitely one of them. So I think I can't Mm -hmm. put this away after we finish this week. I'm going to have to keep this out on, on the stand oh that was verdict um this exercise is definitely going to stick around but I'm just going (laughs) to jump I'm going to jump the gun on that one because that was definitely the highlight of my (laughs) week one I really liked the daily exercises so with the daily Mm -hmm. they're very similar to Tafanel and Gobert except I do enjoy how they actually start on the low C instead of the D so you do get to work out um all of those low notes a little extra range there and then I got to the daily studies two and this is where I kind of died because here he's extended oh, no. this five this five, I don't know how you found it Alex but this five five note scale pattern which we had to play except he stops on the top two notes and kind of makes you alternate between the two for a couple of beats and then back down and just what it does is it oh, like yeah it just it just puts this magnifying glass on 
on your fingers and you know how how it's feeling whether it's actually fluid and clean the technique or whether you're kind of just fluffing or faking it and um <laughs> yeah so yeah that you one can was really brutal. tell when it's uneven yeah mm-hmm. and like some are fine yeah. you just like and then you hit other ones and you're like and then it all starts falling apart and you realize oh okay floor uh, yeah, because he starts off with, you know, like the low C run, you know, where he's yeah. like, la, da, 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 which for the flute, when you go for between G and A, it's just one finger. But mm-hmm. then you get to sections like, so you go from C to D, which is basically mm-hmm. like you use your left hand index finger and your right hand pinky. And then mm-hmm. basically you have to switch between those and the rest of your fingers. And you have I to make it really fluid for any uh, non flutists out there. And it's um, tricky to get that lined up and making it sound nice and not pressing too hard on the flute or else you get that mm-hmm. clicky, clickety clacky yep. sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it brought up what is the difference between mm-hmm. technique and then scales? So it'll be interesting when we hit the scales and breathing section of the omnibus, like how he differentiates mm-hmm. the two. Um, So I don't know if I'm preempting anything, but that's what a question which got brought up because I was mostly playing (laughs) like these little Tuffinel and Gobert repeated notes, um, Mm -hmm. like little patterns, Um, but they were just basically like mini scales really. So I don't know, that brought up a question. It was like, oh, what, what is the difference? Like what, how is he differentiating the two? Hmm. Yeah. Between Hmm. technique and scales. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I saw that like his technique section is more of like how to, it's like building your technique, like how mm. to make sure it's quite, you know, stable and, you know, like really even across the board. So you don't mm-hmm. notice when the fingering get a little tricky, the audience doesn't notice it mm. um, to how to kind of build that, but then also maintain your tone and everything, which is why I think also he put it in book two even though for the order although i'm spoiling a little bit of like my spiel but that's okay we can also bring it up here um like in the order this book actually comes third um in his omnibus of like how you're supposed to play it so the book (laughs) is an order like we're playing it where you have like book one tone book two Uh technique book three Mm -hmm. articulation book four intonation and vibrato book five breathing and scales and book six advanced practice Spoilers, uh-huh. listeners, this might be similar to the next few episodes you might be hearing. You can get a little spoiler. <laughs> but how he has his, um, how he sets it up in the first few pages of how he recommends that the order you play it in is uh-huh. that you start with tone, but yeah. then you skip over to intonation and vibrato next. Whoa. And then you go over to um, two that he has. And then for technique and... Um, uh yeah type for technique he has that third unless you've already advanced to advanced practice then he says do the technique out of advanced practice oh. and then you do breathing and scales last and then he again the thing that I can't wait to talk about is why he has articulation just as like an extra bonus thing <laughs> he doesn't actually put it in there he's like oh yeah and throughout all of it do articulation so wow. it's actually not in the order he's like oh yeah do it where you need it which yeah I'm super intrigued about. So I'm looking mm. forward to getting to that. Cause I'm like, why that did you decide to leave it out of the order? Yeah. So, cause usually people have it in the, like, you know, you do this, 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 and then by the time your tone's all warmed up, like do articulation. Yay. Ooh, well that just brings up more questions. Cause I think I'm going to leave my week one there and ask you how your week one went. And maybe some of these Ooh. questions will be answered. Excellent. I don't know. How was your week one? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, my week <laughs> one, was also like part of the week where my work was a little crazy currently. And mm. so I was teaching a whole bunch, um, mm. which was good. But I wasn't sick yet, which is also good for practicing. Uh, yeah. So uh, I know practicing while sick is always fun. Yeah. Um, but yes, so I decided, I looked at the book a little bit and I decided that in the first week I would focus, I really wanted to kind of, I liked how you had them all set up like one and two, one and two. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, I'll just do daily exercises one and Machiavellian exercises one the first week. Mm-hmm. And then the second week I'll do like two and two Ooh. and then also do the scale exercises there too. Mm. Um, so yeah, so the first week, like you fell in love with the low register. I forgot that it's just amazing oh, like the way he it's has just you kind so of work brutal up. it's good it's super yes. brutal but I love like this book is so great for teaching 
as well that he has that whole mm-hmm. bit where it's like oh for like for me like it was really helpful like oh if you're struggling with this you know you can work on it for in this section but also as a teacher yeah. if a student is struggling how often have we had to like write out little exercises for our students just so that yeah. they can practice yeah. it we don't have to write it out. He says, like, oh, just go over to the scale exercise A8, and then it's there. And so saves, like, yeah. me some manuscript paper and having to write out in the middle of a lesson. I just look at the end of the line mm-hmm. and say, oh, okay, I'll send the student over there to practice it a little bit more. So that mm-hmm. I thought was super cool. <laughs> and I really liked, I was kind of bummed, because then when I started doing daily exercises too, again, listeners, this is the one that's like, la da 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 Better intonation, of course. But <laughs> My nemesis, that, in other yeah, words. Yeah, <laughs> Jen's nem- nemesis. Um, I was like, oh, this would also be a really good, like, trail building exercise, kind of helping you make sure that your tra- trail, like, you know, when you mm. go on a, on a note, so you trail between one or... Uh, between two notes it would be a great building block Mm -hmm. for that so I was really bummed that I'd also scheduled to do trails in the first week and I liked them they reminded me a lot of the Tafanel and Gobert trail exercises they're kind of similar yeah except I don't think they do they didn't he didn't do the turns at the end it was just basically um uh you know he writes out like he has two different series he has a first series and a second series um, and he tells mm-hmm. you where some problems are. And then he also references um, that he talks about uh, intonation for C-sharp trills in practice book one tone. So I was like, oh, okay. Mm. So, but yeah, um, I like that he had it written out and he has like how you should do it. So he starts it off quite easy with just eighth notes, builds it to 16th notes, then to sextuplets, and then to 32nd notes, and then finishes with it just being a super fast trill. It gives a nice little explanation All those there. coming from the UK and Australia, that was quavers, oh, yeah. then semi-quavers, <laughs> then demi-semi-quavers, then trill. <laughs> and then trill. <laughs> Trill's we the same speak all languages here. We do. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. We can wait. I can do it in German for us. First, sie sind acht. Oh, yes. Oh. Then sechs Zainten. Mm-hmm. Then, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't, Sex tupel. Tuplet, tuplet. Okay, I have to ask. I have to double check the sex tuplets. Um, and then zwei und drei six until. Usually, I don't say so that. So, is, in my is lessons, that actually what they re- how they refer to notation in Germany? They do the kind of American system. Of, they do, which is of, uh, really uh, interesting, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. Yeah. So, and then trillo. So, <laughs> just a trill. I never knew that. Oh, I just learned yeah. something new. This is amazing. I know. Well, because you're listening to the podcast, you guys hopefully got to learn the some German Cast today. Podcast Odyssey. You're new. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so I did that also the first week. And I thought it was mm. really interesting that in technique, you had a section on relaxing. So every, I did his mm. little relaxing exercise a few times too. And yeah, I did how'd feel you find him? I, I found it pretty relaxing. Um, okay. And he, uh, like, he talks about, you know, like, you can get pains and, like, and I like that he had a section where he's like, okay, we're working on technique, so, you know, like, your muscles might get sore. So he, like, talks about how yep. you can, like, place your hands if, in, like, a little um, uh, bowl of hot water um, to allow them to relax and relieve oh, yeah. the tension, which was interesting. I would have thought cold water, but it's hot water. Um, and then he also gives like a thing about how to relax your, your back as well, which have we had any back exercises in any of the books that we've done so far? Like there's been a few about breathing exercises and how to like relieve tension in your hands. But I thought this was the first time that I saw something about like relieving back tension. Of course, he references mm. that we should like look into the rockstro position in his book, Efficient Practice, and he doesn't mention it here. I always get a little bummed about that. It's like, come on, <laughs> you had extra space in the book. There's like a little pa- like little place for a nice little paragraph, <laughs> but I get it. If he wrote it in another book, I, I would understand that too. So yeah, but, uh, but yeah, so I did a little bit of that every day. But yeah, it took mm-hmm. a decent amount of time to get through everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I was mm-hmm. definitely practicing a decent amount when I did do the practice. But I and I did enjoy, of course, the Machiavellian exercises, and he has a really nice oh, little yeah. blurb about them. Finger too. twisters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I remember really liking those in college too when I would play through this book. So I did Machiavellian exercises one, not not thing too crazy. I don't think I did them. 
I didn't always do them one octave higher just because with the repeats, sometimes it would take up my whole time. So mm. a few times I would just do the lower octave. Sometimes I would just do the upper octave because that one yeah. is, you know, the, the one that's maybe a little more tricky because we aren't as we don't do those notes as often. He, I like that he says, after a few weeks, play the whole exercise without the repeats as a continuous study. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. that is my goal. I did not maybe get to that this in the first week or neither the second week, uh, but that is kind of like a long-term goal now. I'm like, okay, sounds like a, a plan. Yeah. So, But yes, it was really good. I liked it for like just the fact that you had to like get these turns because the first one is very much like turn-based where you do like starting on one note, go down for three, then back up for three, like with the with the turn mm. note at the mi- in the middle. So, I really enjoyed that too, especially in the middle register section because that is just for fingers. Yeah. It's really easy to allow tension to creep in to the hands, and so it was yeah. a really good reminder. Like, okay, like yes, you're getting it right, but how how relaxed are my hands? So, yeah, <laughs> that was really good. So yeah, I think I spent my week one just kind of perusing through it doing some relaxing exercises I didn't look at any of the examples I was a little bummed about that I meant to but then you know just by the time I finished all the other exercises I just moved on to my regular repertoire as well so yeah uh, but yeah it was going quite well and I think that's the end of my first week Jen how was your week two were you still um perfecting your lower register and making it amazing uh you (laughs) <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it was definitely improving. I mean, you know, what is this quest for perfection that we're on? Yeah, look, it was definitely, I, I kept going with that, that low register workout um, just because I was really encouraged by the results of even just one week doing mm-hmm. that exercise and how much more relaxed. Um, so it was just really nice kind of setting aside that time every day um, where I would intentionally practice those notes focusing on keeping a relaxed hand and not grabbing the flute, which, you know, can kind of sometimes creep into your technique. Mm -hmm. Um, Even after playing for so long, it's weird. Like I just noticed one day that this really weird bad habits kind of crept into my plane and then I have to fix it again. So um, Mm. it's a journey, isn't it? An odyssey. It is. Um, So that was, that was yet again, my week, that was my week two. Jumping off your idea of the trills exercise I I really like the trills exercise in this book. Um, <laughs> I like the way which he practices trills. Um, so I liked that he said set a time and like keep it very rhythmic. So you practice the trills rhythmically because mm-hmm. um, when we play trills, they, of course they have to be as fast as possible, which yeah. often means that we're using alternate fingerings to what we usually play these notes as. That is true. Um, just so that we can play it faster. We're not having to coordinate so many fingers to get this trill because it's Mm -hmm. easier to play to move one finger very fast than say move five fingers very fast all together in perfect unison so um generally so it's it's really I found it really useful especially for when you're sight reading trills sometimes when trills are the trill fingering is very different from the normal fingering there's that moment of hesitation where you're just like oh wait what's that fingering again Mm -hmm. for that particular trill um whereas this it just allows you to slow it all down you just really make it second nature about, yes, when I want to trill from high G to A, this is the fingers I use and what I do. So mm-hmm. um, already when I, I just for fun and because I'm a little bit um, sucker for punishment, I read through a few trill studies, which everyone wow. knows you always avoid because they're horrible and they horrendous. Are horrible. And let's face it, we all just skip over those ones when we go through a study book. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I sight read through a few of them just to, just to see what happened. Yeah. And after a week of practicing these, because uh, I practice them every day, these trill exercises, I, I noticed that it was becoming more second nature to mm. just jump straight into those trills. So again, yeah. again, I was like, oh, Trevor, you've done it again. Yet another <laughs> fantastic exercise with so much reward for so little effort. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. um, so it was great. And the other one was the sequences he's got Ooh. at the end of the book. So he says practice sequences because and what I found really encouraging, there's this one sentence in his little blurb. As per usual, this book is full of fantastic advice and so many little pithy bits of wisdom peppered throughout. <laughs> anyway, this one what happened above the sequences. Sequences will also enable those who are keen on Baroque music or jazz 
to get to know the flute well enough to be able to improvise. A most useful accomplishment and one to which many an orchestral player has had to resort when they've lost their place. I was like, woohoo! <laughs> what are we all doing, man? Um, <laughs> happens to the best ones so, too. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I love how he's put the little claws of human fallibility in there. It's like mm-hmm. even all these like heroes, you know, who are amazing, like even they have their human moments and have to ad lib for a little mm-hmm. while just to get back in where they are. Um, <laughs> so. I just really liked that little. I love. I love how he like acknowledges the humanity of playing and music. Like every so often in his books, like he doesn't. He doesn't. There's never this assumption that we're just machines who will just do everything perfectly all the time. It's like things are going to happen. Things are going to happen, and uh, these are some ways which you can cover the things happening. So yeah, hooray. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I re- the one thing I liked about the sequences was, A, I got to practice some technique of intervals because up until then the intervals were very small. We were like we were just practicing scale exercises, like just one mm-hmm. one step notes basically between. Um, whereas the sequences, finally we got to practice a few kind of more arpeggios. And then I liked how we would change, uh, how we had to like, always be thinking of the next chord and the next chord and so it wasn't just a technique exercise it was also a brain exercise like I found it really good for just switching on my brain like if I was feeling a bit sleepy because it's very hard to be on autopilot when you're having to like switch keys every bar Mm -hmm. um, or half a bar you just really have to be focused and and on or else (laughs) things will fall down as they did a few times quite a few times many times um and then, of course, he does his classic Trevor, Trevor White thing of where he gives you all of these so many useful ways of practicing each different mm. uh, sequence and ways which you can kind of internalize it if you're finding it really hard. Anyway, so, uh, oh, wow. yeah, that was my week two. Oh, so, cool. yes. Yeah, it sounds like a good week two. It was. And I mean, I didn't find like I needed to reference the other books hugely. I mean, there was a few mentions with, especially with the improvisation Mm -hmm. uh, or the sequences section, there was kind of greater elaboration on improvisation in breathing and scales. But apart from that, there wasn't really, it was a pretty self-sufficient little, little section of the omnibus, this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was your week too, Alex? Uh, it was also pretty good. I continued down the path that I mentioned in week one with doing daily exercises to mm-hmm. Mach 2, as I shortened it to, Machiavellian exercises too, And then I too went over <laughs> to the sequences, which oh, they were yep. just so much fun. They were like fun scales, yeah. but um, really good yeah. for helping to um, get all the fingers quite even. Um, and I like that he put them, mm. I think maybe you mentioned as well, like uh, they can be thought of as stairs, little musical fragments that are repeated in a set order. Mm. So, um, mm. and I like that there's a lot of jumps too. So you can work on that aspect of the technique, even though it's not technically a scale. Mm-hmm. So get all those little problem areas kind of nutted out and sorted. So, and um, I think my favorites yeah. were the, all the diminished chords that they went through as well so I had a lot of fun oh with yeah those. they're beautiful <laughs> yeah and yeah like you said at the end where he starts doing a lot of them chromatically the exercises where you go like uh-huh. from like c d e f g f e d c sharp d sharp e sharp <laughs> and he like just goes up <laughs> yeah. and it's not usually because usually in music we work in like you know the circle of fifths or something like there's like some sort of chordal progression mm-hmm. it's not always super chromatic in nature or in scales, no. often we have like the major and then we do the minor and it's either the relative major mm-hmm. or minor going on from there. Um, so, yeah, another way to kind of challenge our fingers and really like check our technique in different ways than we are used to, because chromaticism is a large part of music. So <laughs> making mm. sure that is also especially 20th care. century. <laughs> yeah. And I like that he, you know, also included the option to do it in triplets as well. So instead of. Da 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 da. See, so like da 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 da. da. So you could also practice yeah. it like that. Um, I didn't do very much of that, but because just for time's sake, I didn't have enough time mm. to get through it. There was a lot. I did touch on it, but not as much as I would have liked. Um, which is often the case with my week two. Is I always have great plans, and then <laughs> I realize that time takes it takes a little bit of time to do everything. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, I didn't do too much of that. I kept up with my exercises for relaxing. And I did notice that I started craving that at the end of my practice, just kind of having that moment to kind yeah. of rest and like, you know, revive my back and or like do some finger stretches as yeah. well. And that yeah. really seemed to help a lot with longevity of practicing. And uh, I did look at one or two of the excerpts in the back during week two. There was this one by mm-hmm. Handel, which I hadn't really seen very, very often before. The Il oh, Pensieroso. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Yeah. But I, I hadn't really seen that as one before. But it was a nice, um, I found it a really great trill exercise because he does the 16th note like you know Mm. like a 16th note down to the trill which is then held for a slightly longer duration which already you know is something that they check in auditions to see if you're able to keep that internal rhythm um i was very excited about that and that they had the dtu sonatine so because um oh yes uh bernal does that beautiful set of uh transposing the main theme to get up to the da 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 yeah and going on sorry this is actually my singing yeah. podcast i'm just gonna hum all the melodies <laughs> we love it <laughs> so but yeah uh, i really like the choices and yeah that the choices for technique were usually about repeat repeated notes like a lot of repetitions mm-hmm. on patterns and mm-hmm. so they were scalar in means but i think like the focus of why he chose all the excerpts were that they had these little technical patterns which are just repeated so I was like, okay, yeah. like the Till Eulenspiegel, you have like the 16th, 16th, oct, 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 now I'm switching to German again, 16th, 16th, 8th note, so like, da 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 and switching back, so, and the patterns would change, mm. but I wouldn't really call it scalar in nature. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting yeah. and cool, why he, um, how he grouped all of those together, and uh, I'll probably keep it in mm. mind if I'm ever working on a lot of technical aspects of an excerpt for some audition, just like maybe looking in here and yeah. seeing if there's any other ones that are similar without having to, you know, go through the entire flute repertoire that I own. So, but yeah, so that was my <laughs> week two. So I think, Jen, that means that wow. we might be in verdict territory, which we've verdict already maybe, territory. You know, given you the listeners i think we've already (laughs) kind of given several semi little verdicts Mm -hmm. uh yes uh but yeah my verdict for this this uh section of the omnibus technique um look i thought that this is much like the tone really really good for a whole range of players so uh from beginners newbies on the flute to uh university level it's just really nice. It's got some really nice scale patterns and also it can be extended or condensed depend- depending on um, your range of notes which you have under your fingers. And another thing I really appreciate is he doesn't have any tempo markings um, for how fast you That's should be playing true. this scale. So it's really up to it's really up to each individual player and playing everything in a controlled manner. He emphasizes that so much. Like mm-hmm. it needs to be controlled and like clockwork. It doesn't matter how fast you're going, but it needs to be controlled and like clockwork. Um so I really liked that about it. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, it can just be adjusted for all levels. And, of course, it's packed full of details and advice. Um, but I think out of all of this, my favourite section of this would have to be the low register exercises. <laughs> it's just so good. Mm-hmm. And I, I got such – I was so encouraged by the results I was getting from it um, in such a short amount of time and same with the trills. I don't know, something about those two exercises just really clicked with me this fortnight and I saw the biggest improvement in my technique. Yeah, so I think that would be my verdict. Two thumbs up. Um, (laughs) Those bits are definitely staying on the stand. Nice. That's my verdict. That's a very positive verdict. How about you, Alex? Uh, My verdict, I think, as well as you, I think we've already hinted that this book was a really great resource of how to practice technical aspects of pieces and scales. Like he's just got lots of great exercises. And I like, of course, that they're also sequential in nature. You can start off with like some beginning ones. And he also starts with the low register, which Mm -hmm. often for beginners is a little easier to conquer than the upper register. As well, also for intermediate Mm -hmm. and advanced players, everyone has the same. Like no one starts off the flute with like, oh yeah, listen to my upper register. So... um, (laughs) 
it's, it's a awesome. Thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And I really liked how he, like, as I mentioned, that it's progressive and sequential. You're moving forward. Um, and that he also tells you like, oh, yeah, once you finish this book, you know, there's even more that you can do to keep these kind of trouble areas under control in my advanced practice, which we will hopefully get to on this podcast, too. Hey, hey. Mm. Um, and yeah, I have to say mm-hmm. after this, my trails were heaps better. They were quite even. So I feel like maybe I've been neglecting my trails a little bit over the past few weeks. And they had really improved with like just doing this, the that one daily exercises two was it the da 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 yeah that one I think yeah. that really helped it and then also just doing just plain scales with a couple of his little hints in there as well um, but yeah I thought it was really great and I think whenever I have trouble areas now instead of instantly just I mean I do love writing my own little exercises especially if it's handy for you know for like an excerpt like kind of like what we did with the share and sparrow method you know adding mm. in and writing our own personal warm-ups, but if I'm feeling lazy or I'm tired, this might be, a, I, this would be the book I will turn to now, like, okay, let's see if he has, if mm. uh, Trevor has any exercises that work in this sort of scalar pattern, because he has so many, and then just kind of work on that, and then maybe that'll help me get out of my rut, and then just back to practicing, because we all land in ruts, you yeah. just have to power through, so... This will be my new power okay. through tool, I think. And also for teaching. I'm so Ooh. excited to use this with teaching as well. So, because there's just, yeah, a plethora of useful tidbits and exercises. Mm. So, can't recommend enough for teachers and for your own individual practice. And I think for anyone who's basically yeah. got a grasp on scales, at least in like an octave or two, yeah, this book is for you. So, that would be my yeah. verdict. And I think, listener, that is our show for today. Short and sweet getting to the so. point short just and like sweet. just like Snappy. the book <laughs> just like the book yeah <laughs> so but anyways uh <laughs> listeners we hope you enjoyed this episode remember if uh, you can find us on all the different uh, and various podcast platforms if you mm-hmm. had any questions or comments that you would like us to know about um or include maybe in the show notes uh, you can write to us at the practice odyssey at gmail.com Or if you're feeling super loving, you can leave us a rating or comment on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us out in the search engines and other people can find the show. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube by searching the Practice Odyssey podcast and can join our little cohort over there, which is awesome. Um, Mm. Music in this episode was written by me, Alessandra Woods, and show art is from Ivan Potter Smith. So, listeners, we hope you have a wonderful fortnight. Um, We'll see you again in two weeks for the next book in the season of (laughs) why. All right. Take care. We'll see you next time. See you. Bye. Bye.